Hey, Blockchain Visionaries, I'm George Levy. I actually want to show you right now the difference between an ERC-20 token and an ERC-721. A lot of people talk about ERC-20s and ERC-721s, but do you really know the difference between both? I'm going to show you, and I think in the process, you're going to have a lot of fun. Let's do this. In this video, I'm going to start talking to you about the concept of digital assets, and I'm going to talk to you about the difference between just a regular image or a file like a document, such as a such as a song MP3 or maybe a JPEG or an you know PNG. These are all you know digital files that you can share around. There's a big difference between that and, for example, a Bitcoin. A Bitcoin is a digital asset, but it's very, very different from an image or a song. So let me give you a, a perfect example. And right now, what you're looking at is Coin Market Cap, and what you're seeing is right now the price of one Bitcoin is nine thousand seven hundred seventy-two dollars and ninety-nine cents. This is an average across a lot of different uh, exchanges. What you see here is all the different markets that are actually listed for. Bitcoin. So these are all different exchanges, and whenever I show you the price of a Bitcoin, it's actually an average across the top major exchanges. But there's a reason why I want to tell you all this. The difference between a Bitcoin, for instance, and say just a file, like a picture of something, is very, very different. So let me show you something. If I open up a new window and I go and I look up for photo of Mona Lisa, right? So let's look at the painting of the Mona Lisa. Right now, I can go here and I can see a picture of the Mona Lisa. Now, the Mona Lisa itself, if you go to the Louvre, right, if I go to Louvre Museum Mona Lisa, what you will find is if I actually go to the images, you'll find that the Mona Lisa is one image and people from all around the world want to see this one image. That's very, very different from this picture you have right here. Even though this is a picture of the Mona Lisa, there is only one Mona Lisa. That's what makes this picture at the Louvre worth what whatever millions of dollars it's worth versus this image. Because right now, if I really like this picture, I can just right click on it. I can just save the image and there I have it. I have a picture of the Mona Lisa. So that's a big, big challenge with digital files is the fact that if I have a picture like this, just a JPEG file that I could just download of the Mona Lisa, that really is not worth anything. I could email it to someone else and it's really not that valuable very different from the one and only Mona Lisa that exists and currently is at the Louvre in France. So this is very important for you to understand because when you go into the world of digital assets, being able to have a unique digital asset, that is one asset that if I have it and I give it to you, I no longer have it, right? That's what makes it valuable. The way that you do that is through cryptography and using blockchain technology. The details of that are for a different video. For this specific video, what I want to point out to you is the fact that right now, let's look at valuable digital assets. And specifically, I'm going to focus on two ERC-20 and ERC-721. So basically, I'm going to show you two different types of tokens, ERC-20 and ERC-721s, and show you the difference between both. Okay, so as we go, I want to go back to coin market cap. And what I want to show you right now is that the price of one Bitcoin is $9,772.25. What that really means is that on the blockchain, whoever has one Bitcoin and transfers it to someone else is transferring one Bitcoin, which if that person wanted to sell that Bitcoin, could get around $9,772.25. You see, there's value to that. Now. The reason why that's important is that if you go into the blockchain, you can find any single transaction that has ever happened on Bitcoin, and it'll keep record of whoever owns the different block uh, Bitcoins on the Bitcoin blockchain. Okay, so now let's move from the cryptocurrency Bitcoin and go into tokens. So let me show you uh, something that's very interesting. If I go into tokens, let me show you some different tokens. What you'll find is that tokens are a different type of cryptocurrency which is built on top of a platform. In this case, the majority of these tokens are actually built on top of Ethereum. Today, I am going to be focusing on two types of tokens built on Ethereum, ERC-20s and ERC-721s. Let me give you some examples. So, when you're looking at an ERC-20 token, this is the kind of token that's used primarily in all of these initial coin offerings that you hear. Whenever a company issues an initial coin offering, what they're selling are tokens, and those tokens are usually ERC-20s. Now, if you go through these, you'll find that a lot of these specific uh, tokens, 
The aug auger, for instance, is a very popular ERC-20 token, and you can actually see how they are traded around. It's an ERC-20 token, and you can see the volume of this. Now, right now, the market cap for the uh, ERC-20 tokens that constitute uh, auger is actually $171,913,829. And they constantly move around. You see, these are all transactions done between addresses moving around. So these are digital assets, just like a Bitcoin, that move around. But they're not actually a Bitcoin. A Bitcoin is a coin, while Augur is a token that's built on top of Ethereum. To be specific, Augur, which the actual symbol for is REP, is an ERC-20 token, and it actually trades fully, so it has its own value. So what's interesting is that anyone can create an ERC-20 token. As a matter of fact, what you're seeing here is an ERC-20 token that I created called the One Blockchain at a Time token, and the symbol for that one is O-B-A-A-T. It's funny because I happen to be a billionaire in one blockchain at a time tokens. Now mind you, that doesn't mean that I'm worth billions of dollars. What it means is that I created two billion one blockchain at a time tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. These are ERC-20 tokens. This is where things start getting interesting. I can issue these ERC-20 tokens and I can send them to other people. Now what's, what's interesting about ERC-20 tokens is that they are fungible. The term fungible means that they are one token is the same as any other. So if I send you one ERC-20 token, one blockchain at a time, and I send you another one, they're the same. There's nothing distinct about them. <clears throat> same as a Bitcoin. If I pay you for a product and I, you charge me, say, two Bitcoins for that product, and I pay you in two Bitcoins, you don't care which Bitcoins I actually give you. They're the same. They're one and the same. In the case of ERC-20 tokens, that's exactly the same concept. And yes, in the case of Bitcoin, some people may say, well, you know, some Bitcoins have bad history. But let's go for the purposes of what we're talking about. The concept of fungible means that all tokens are the same. So in this case, <clears throat> these one blockchain at a time tokens, <clears throat> I created two billion of them. They're all the same. So if I send, for example, in this case, this was a transaction I did nine days ago, I sent one million ERC-20 tokens that are one blockchain at a time to a different address. Previously, I had sent another one million to another address, and I use these as rewards sometimes. When I'm working with someone else, someone does a very good job, I basically issue tokens, uh, these one blockchain at a time tokens, which they can then eventually, if they want, they can redeem them with me, and I give them products and services in exchange. You see, I'm creating my own own cryptocurrency for my benefit called the one blockchain at a time and anybody can create these ERC-20 tokens. Okay, so far you understand the concept of an ERC-20 token. If you're interested in creating your own ERC-20 tokens, I've published another video on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash George Levy, where I teach you the process of how I created these one blockchain at a time tokens. Let's move on to the next token type. So I talked to you about ERC-20 now I'm going to talk to you about ERC-721s. And by ERC-721s, what we're doing is a non-fungible token. That is that one token is different from another one. What I'm showing you here is CryptoKitties. Now, CryptoKitties are the best-known use case for 721s. And when most people think of a 721 uh, non-fungible token, they think of CryptoKitties. Now, here's what's fascinating. All of these CryptoKitties that are here, belong to me. See, George Levy owns these, and as you can see, George Levy has his own address, and all of these I actually have assigned and locked to my wallet. I actually have a wallet that has the corresponding private key, and I own these different crypto kitties. I could sell this crypto kitty to someone else. I could trade this crypto kitty from someone else, but the fact is, these are unique that I own. So notice how this is very different from example, from just taking a picture of the Mona Lisa and sending it to someone else. In this case, this kitty right here, C Kitty, is a crypto kitty that I own assigned to me. Now, what's interesting is that if I wanted to sell this crypto kitty, someone would have to pay me and I would have to then assign that crypto kitty to someone else. That's very, very different, for example, from me just being able to download an image and then just send it to someone else. I am basically assigning ownership so that this 
would no longer belong to George Levy. Now, I know that to you this may not seem right now like a big deal, but the key thing I want you to understand is that in the grand scheme of things, this crypto kitty here is cryptographically assigned to me. Now, let's assume that I were Steph Curry. Now, Steph Curry is a really famous basketball player who issued his own set of crypto kitties. This was actually a big, big uh, story for some time. If you're a fan of Steph Curry, you would really want to own the crypto kitty that belongs to Steph Curry. And it could be a crypto kitty that looks exactly like Steph, but don't just use Steph Curry. Use anybody else. You can create an, a piece of art, a work of art, and it belongs to someone else. And anybody in the world can actually look on the blockchain and see that that specific work of art belongs to a specific person. This is where the difference of 721s, that is ERC-721 tokens, is from ERC-20s. In the case of these ERC-20 tokens, I can send 1 million of these crypto, uh, sorry, yeah, these ERC-20 tokens to someone else, and it doesn't make a difference. These are the same as these other 1 million that I sent to someone else and these other 1 million that I sent to another person another time, right? Just like, for example, if I have some Bitcoins and I want to actually send some Bitcoins to someone else, it doesn't really matter which Bitcoins I send to someone versus another person. At the end of the day, you want to get paid in Bitcoin, you get paid three Bitcoins. Think about it like dollars. Like, for example, if you have something that costs $4, you just pull out four any dollars and you pay somebody else. It doesn't matter if they're crisp brand new dollars or old brand new dollars. If you're actually in the European Union, you could pay in euros or you could pay in uh, you know pounds or you could play in yen. It doesn't matter. Currencies like these doesn't matter because they're all the same. They're fungible. That's typically what the ERC20 token standard goes for. This is a standard on Ethereum, and you create these tokens that you can create as many as you want, and they're all exactly the same. That's what an ERC-20 token is, versus the ERC-721 token uh, standard that actually lets you create unique, non-fungible digital assets. There's only one you can call me Hal, one Vogue, one My Precious Opcat, and one C Kitty. Oh. And let's not forget Mr. Baby Mustache and Satoshi Katamoto. So get it. All of these are different ways in which digital assets can be created on these very, very well-known token standards, ERC-20 and ERC-721. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do that now and stay in touch as I bring you brand new videos every single week. Until next time, we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm George Levy. We're changing the world one blockchain at a time. See you next time.